In our first report, we emphasized the importance of the Security Council consensus on the adoption of Resolution 1970. We also announced that we will request arrest warrant in the following weeks. The Security Council consensus has greatly enhanced the cooperation received by my office and allowed us to present the first case in a few months. In the second briefing, we explain that the arrest warrant issued by the judges on 27th of June unveiled the crimes committed against civilians in Tripoli and other areas under the control of Gaddafi. The judges concluded that in order to stop the crimes and protect civilians, it was necessary to arrest the three individuals identified as the most responsible, Muammar Gaddafi, Saif al-Islam Gaddafi, and Abdullah al-Sanusi. The office informed that the Libyan, if the Libyan authorities decide to prosecute the same individuals for the same crimes under investigation by the International Criminal Court, they should submit an admissibility challenge and it will be decided by the ICC judges. Today, I inform the Council that the Libyan authorities have arrested Saif al-Islam Gaddafi and have presented such a challenge. The application was filed on 1st of May and notes that on 8th of January 2012, the Libyan Prosecutor General commenced an investigation of serious crimes that include murder and rape allegedly committed by Saif al-Islam Gaddafi during the 2011 revolution, including the period between 15 February and 28 February 2010. The filing also states that the Libyan government is committed to attaining the highest international standards, both for the conduct of its investigation and any eventual trials. Libyan authorities also said that Saif al-Islam has been kept in adequate conditions of detention, provided with sufficient and good quality food, given access to ICC, and the option of retaining a domestic lawyer of his choosing. Saif also received visits from the ICRC, NGOs, and family members. He has been provided with proper medical and dental care and not been subject to physical abuse. That is what the Libya government presents to the judges. Following the submission of the Libyan admissibility challenge, the pre-trial chamber requested observations from different parties to the proceedings, as well as from the UN Security Council. Rule 59, of the ICC Rule of Procedures and Evidence provide that those who have referred a situation, in this case the Security Council, must be notified of the challenge and may, in response, make representation on the jurisdictional challenges. The registry has transmitted the notification through a note verbal to the UN Secretary General. This is the first time in the short history of the International Criminal Court that the state is requesting jurisdiction to conduct a national investigation against the same individuals and for the same incidents under investigation by the International Criminal Court. The challenge goes to the heart of the system of justice established in 1998 by the Rome Statute. National states have the primary obligation to conduct proceedings and the International Criminal Court intervention will be complementary. The prosecution will present its observations on this admissibility challenge 
as requested by the Petal Chamber on 4 of June. Let me be clear, there are no doubts on the legal principles. The Rome Statute is based on the primacy of national proceedings, as mentioned on numerous occasions in relation to Darfur and other situations, the office will not evaluate the Libyan judicial system as a whole. The office will check the factual situation in accordance with the statute requirements that include the intervention of an independent and impartial judiciary. The Security Council may decide to present observations, but this is a judicial issue that will be decided by the judges of the pretrial chamber. Mr. President, Abdullah Al Sanusi was also arrested on 17 March 2012 by Mauritanian authorities. He is subject to extradition request from France and Libya, as well as a request for surrender from the International Criminal Court. Mauritania shall decide. My office continues to collect evidence in relation to a second case in Libya on gender crimes committed against both men and women. The UN Commission of Inquiry findings confirmed the commission of these crimes. My office is mindful of the sensitivity surrounding rape in Libya and has adopted a strategy to limit exposure of victims by focus on obtaining evidence from doctors and soldiers. The investigation is progressing. The report of the UN Commission of Inquiry issued on March 2, 2012, presents a comprehensive view of the crimes committed in Libya. There are thousands of allegations of crimes committed by Gaddafi forces and thousands of individuals allegedly involved in such crimes who are in detentions. Many of them still not under the jurisdiction of the national authorities and allegedly sub subjected to mistreatment or torture by rebel forces. There are allegations as well of crimes committed against civilians in Tawerga and question remains to be answered about the circumstances of the death of Muammar Gaddafi. Additionally, the UN Commission of Inquiry found that NATO did not deliberately target civilians in Libya. It was established that of a total of 25,944 air strikes and 7,642 air-to-surface weapons employed, the Commission cited evidence with respect to five air strikes that reportedly producing, produced civilian casualties. The Office of the Prosecutors takes due note of the UN Commission of Inquiry findings the office has no jurisdiction to evaluate the proper scope of the NATO mandate in relation with the UN Security Council Resolution 1973. But the office is requesting further information about these five incidents identified by the Commission of Inquiry. The government of Libya has committed to a comprehensive strategy to address all crimes and end impunity in Libya. While the government faced challenge on many fronts, this comprehensive strategy must remain a priority if the government is to show that impunity will not longer be tolerated. This strategy must address as a priority the transfer to the central authorities and the screening of thousands of detainees the investigation of allegations of crimes by these detainees were warranted to ensure justice for the victims and the release of those against who
whom there is no basis for investigations. Let me tell, listen to the council the personal experience I had when I visited Tripoli. I was in the lobby of the hotel. A man approached me, showed me his son of nine years old. He said he was exposed in a TV with a flag of the rebellion, and then the Gaddafi forces targeted him, captured him, and raped it in a tank. He was able to trace the man, and they were arrested. And that's why, for me, it's relevant to present information. It was one of the many thousands of cases that they had to deal with. But the authorities in Libya released this man because there, no, there was no more evidence against him. There was no more witness against him. And then this father told me what I should do now. I have weapons. I can kill this man. I don't like to be a killer. I want justice for my kid. So this was just one example of the thousands of similar problems Libya had to face in the coming month. At the same time, all unofficial and unacknowledged detention centers should be dismantled, and all possible steps should be taken to curb mistreatment of torture. The government of Libya express its commitment to conduct investigations and prosecutions to address the most serious crimes committed by all sides. The government of Libya has adopted a transitional justice law that created the fact-finding and a reconciliation commission that could contribute to strengthening the rule of law in the country. My office will fulfill its mandate the office mandate is to investigate those who bear the greater responsibility for the most serious crimes under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court, while respecting genuine national proceedings. So the office will monitor Libyan national proceedings closely. My office is also gathering information about the activities outside Libya of high-level Gaddafi officials who were allegedly involved in Rome statute crimes and who reportedly continue to seek to destabilize the situation of Libya. Mr. President, I would like to conclude by emphasizing again the importance of the adoption by consensus of Resolution 1970, which defined the need to do justice in Libya to ensure peace and security. Such consensus was also expressed during my previous briefing and in the recently adopted Resolution 2040, which states that the Council is looking forward to a future for Libya based on national reconciliation, justice, respect for human rights, and the rule of law. This commitment to justice and the rule of law plays a crucial role in the current post-conflict situation. It provides a framework for the national authorities to act. Recently, during my April visit to Tripoli and Misrata, members of the National Transitional Council and of the Libyan public express their deep appreciation for the decisive intervention of the UN Security Council and the International Criminal Court. They, start, they started the rebellion requesting justice, justice for the crimes committed in Abu Salim prison on 29 June 1996. They knew under, or they believe, under the Gaddafi regime, there would be no justice in Libya. Now, the government in particular express the grateful, but also the convictions that they should size this historical moment and provide justice for all the Libya victims. They believe it's their responsibility. My office remains committed to working with the government of Libya and with this council to maintain this common effort and to ensure that justice for all the victims of Libya is achieved. Thank you very much.